In our unfolding series this week, we're looking at several of the challenges the president, whoever he turns out to be, will face in the next term. The biggest challenge, almost everyone agrees, is growing the economy and creating jobs. Mark Zandi is chief economist at Moody's Analytics and also an occasional columnist here at The Post. And he's here to explain in a couple simple steps how, how we do it. It can't be that hard, can it? Well, uh, the most important thing uh, is to address some of these fiscal issues. Uh, the fiscal cliff, the treasury yeah. debt ceiling, uh, how do we achieve what you might call fiscal sustainability? These are phrases, big words, but yeah. at the end of the day, unless we nail that down, I don't think businesses regain the confidence necessary to go out and hire more aggressively, and that's the missing link. That's what we need to get the job market back to where we want to see it. How big a danger is the fiscal cliff? It's the most significant threat to our economy right now. I mean, under current law, if policymakers don't do a thing, right. then the Bush-era tax cuts expire. We get uh, all kinds of spending cuts. You add it all up, it's $700 billion plus for 2013. Yeah, so taxes go up, spending goes down. Yeah. It, it's an anti-stimulus for the economy. It's 4 or 5% of GDP. And of course, the economy is growing. GDP is the value of all, all the things that we produce. Uh, we're growing 2%. So, you know, 2% minus 4%, that's a negative 2%. That's a bad number. That's a bad number. That's recession. Debt and deficit, kind of distinct from the economy, but, but they, they link up in, in this way, that it becomes one of the most important things to solve the economic picture, the long-term debt and deficit. I, I think it does in, in two uh, key ways. One is, I think uh, business people, uh, households, investors increasingly are nervous about how are we going to do this? You know, this is, seems like a very daunting problem. How are we going to get our fiscal house in order? The you know, numbers seem impossible and the politics seem impossible. I mean, I don't even know where you go for hope. Yeah, it's doable. It really is. I mean, if so how just, do we do it? Well, uh, the numbers are we need roughly $3 trillion in 10-year deficit reduction. Spending cuts, tax revenue increases, some combination of the two. On the revenue side, you know, uh, the president has proposed, President Obama has proposed, allowing tax rates for upper income individuals to increase. If, if you did that, that would generate a lot of revenue. Yeah. Uh, Governor Romney has said, I'm not, gonna I'm not gonna focus on the revenue side. I'm, I'm, I'm just not, that's not where I'm gonna go. It's all gonna be on the spending side. But if he does that, uh, then spending cuts have to come in the entitlement programs because that's where the money is. So when people say you can cut your way or possibly grow your way out of it, not possible? No, it is, I, I, I think it is possible. I think it's doable and I think we're gonna get there. I mean, Without I, raising revenue, you think we can do no, it? No, 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 okay, we that's need what revenue. I'm saying. Yeah. You, okay. yeah, we gotta do both. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's very, very difficult uh, to, when you sit down and do the budget math, to come up with the cuts that you need uh, uh, to get to that fiscal sustainability, uh, unless you have some tax revenue. So I think the most uh, logical thing to do here is to mostly focus on spending. I think we need to do that and have entitlement reform, but we also need tax revenue. Separate but connected to all this, housing. How big of an impact can it have on the economy, either upside or downside? Well, this is, the, this is the best news we've had in a long time. The housing market, which was ground zero for the recession, uh, is now, it's found its bottom. It's now improving, and all indications are it will continue to improve. It, it won't be a straight line, but the housing market a year from now will be better than today. And two years, three years from now, I think it's going to be in full swing. I'm putting you on the spot here, so just say if you haven't done this analysis. Uh, people put me on the spot all the time. Okay. Fair, fair enough. It, Go it, ahead. It's your job. Yeah, right. Do, can housing rebound if as part of this fiscal grand bargain, they get rid of the tax deduction on mortgage interest? Uh, if they did it overnight, no. If, they, if policymakers phased it in over 10, 15, 20 years, and let's say they don't get rid of it completely, let's say they limit it, they cut the, the cost of it in half from 100 billion a year to 50 billion a year. Yeah. I think that's perfectly digestible. In fact, if, if I were king for the day, yeah. and you were asking me how would I generate some tax revenue, and I'd focus on uh, tax reform, one of the things I would reform would be the mortgage interest deduction. What else do you want people thinking about as we head towards the election and worry about the economy? Well, you know, I, I think, my view, I'm optimistic. You know, I think everyone is very dark and pessimistic. And it's not hard to be. You know, no. we do have some really daunting problems. But, you know, I think we've righted a lot of the wrongs that got us into this mess. I mean, our American companies, if you look at their balance sheets, they've never been stronger. I'm, I mean, I'm not ag exaggerating. This is not hyperbole. We are primed for a lot of growth. All we need to do is nail down a few of these fiscal issues in a, just a reasonable way. And, and I'm, I'm not arguing this isn't going to be e I'm not arguing this is easy. It's going to be a lot of brinkmanship. But I think uh, once we do that, confidence will, uh, uh, will reappear and we'll be off and running. Optimism. We'll take it any time yeah. we can get it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mark. My pleasure.